insulation is the most important building feature for comfort and energy efficiency. Unfortunately, common mineral wool insulation like fiberglass, rock wool and slag wool that are used in almost every home are energy intensive products with very high carbon footprints. A company in Idaho called Hempitecture has come up with an alternative building insulation that is eco-friendly and has a low carbon footprint. Hemp wool is a plant-based, sustainable and high-performance insulation for walls, floors and ceilings. It provides resistance to the flow of heat and lowers your heating and cooling costs. It is quickly gaining traction in the construction industry as a replacement for traditional insulation. I recently visited the factory in Idaho to learn more about the company and their products. In this video, we're going to discover how hemp wool is made, how it performs and its pros and cons. Hemp wool is a natural thermal insulation made from the fibers of the hemp plant. Bales of shredded hemp arrive at the manufacturing facility from all over northern states and Canada. The color of the dried hemp fibers varies depending on the amount that it is retted. Retting is a process that allows moisture to begin separation of the fiber from the stalk. Darker fiber has been retted for longer and lighter fiber has been retted for less time. Hemp wool can also include sheep wool from New Zealand or even recycled wool. Hempitecture's acoustic insulation bats use recycled and virgin cotton for better sound absorption. To bind and fuse the hemp fibers together, they use a small amount of polyester bonding fibers. Some people may not like the fact that Hempitecture uses plastic in a natural insulation product, but I personally don't see it as a problem. Plastic is such an incredible and versatile human invention. I've said this before in previous videos, Short-term and one-time use plastic is wreaking havoc on our planet. Long-term use plastic can actually be more sustainable than metal or glass. High-quality insulation like hemp wool can last a hundred years. Hempitecture also tries to use recycled polyester fibers in their insulation to further lower the energy footprint of their product. Deshaun Hutchinson, production manager at Hempitecture, walked us through the hemp wool manufacturing line and explained how every machine works. The first machines used are bale openers. Tightly compressed bales of hemp, polyester, cotton or other ingredients are lifted onto these machines. They comb, stretch and break up the fibers and then transport them to the next step of the production line. The quantity of the raw ingredients pulled through depends on the moisture content of the hemp fibers. The bale openers can be fine-tuned through these manual controls. You can specify the percentages of each material, air pressure, quantities, see what's jammed and more. The second machine is a pre-opener. Small metal spikes on a wooden drum grab the hemp and polyester fibers, separate them and pull them upwards through ducts. Conveyor belts, motors, fans and air move the fibers to the third machine, a blending box. The fibers are dropped in layers so you can see the white polyester bonding fibers mixed in with the brown hemp fibers. The typical mix for indoor insulation is 90% hemp and 8% polyester. This part of the machine also has a self-cleaning cylinder, a fluffer, a separating drum and a packer. You can specify how much fiber can be packed and sent to the next machine. This fourth section is called the fine opener. Another wooden drum with metal spikes slowly opens up the fibers one last time before sending it upwards to the next part. The fifth and most important machine is the air lay. An air pressure regulator pulls fibers, packs them together and deposits them on a moving belt. When the pressure drops, it pulls more fiber. When the pressure gets too high, the fiber drops down. This method creates a finely mixed, uniform web of fibers with the desired density and thickness. Deshaun, who was giving us the tour, referred to the airlay machine as the holy grail of the production line. It is critical to get the right thickness, density, consistency, and proportion of raw materials in this machine. 
Fortunately, if the mix isn't right, they can salvage it and throw it back at the start of the production line, which are the bale openers. The sixth and final part of the production line is the oven. For a typical insulation bat, it goes from 7 inches to 6.5 inches to the final 5.5 inches. The machine uses natural gas burners and fans to heat the fiber mixture up to 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. After the polyester fibers melt and fuse the hemp fibers together, the hemp wool bats are cooled down with exhaust fans and moved to the cutting station. Large circular blades that look like pizza cutters cut the insulation bats down to 16 inch or 24 inch widths. A guillotine blade cuts the bats down to the final length, usually 48 inches. Both blades can be adjusted to make different sizes of bats, including custom lengths and widths. I made a video on hemp wool insulation a couple of years ago. Hemp is a sustainable, fast-growing product and I love seeing its resurgence in popularity after decades of suppression. I also love the idea of using hemp as an eco-friendly building material. Hemp Hempitecture has made a lot of progress in the last couple of years. They used to only sell hemp wool from other companies, but now, thanks to their manufacturing facility in Idaho, they can produce their own product. Touring their plant made me appreciate how much hard work goes into producing this insulation material. Hemp is a tough fiber to manipulate, and Hempitecture is the only company in the US making this material. They don't have a playbook to follow, so they are learning through continuous experimentation. Right now, they are scaling up production of four insulation bats. The thinnest ones are 2 inches and 3.5 and inches that fits into a standard 2x4 stud bay. They also have a larger 5.5 inch thick bat that fits into a 2x6 stud bay. The third product is a massive 7.5 inch thick bat that fits into 2x8 stud bays. All these bats have an R value of 3.7 per inch. So this particular product would be great for an exterior R30 wall. Hempitecture is also conscious of their energy consumption. While they use natural gas in their burners, the rest of the plant is powered with renewable energy. They have an advanced waste collection system to ensure that nothing useful heads to landfills. Any scrap material is chopped up and sent back to the production line. Hemp dust particles are also collected in large drums. The production process of hemp wool is very messy, so this system helps reduce the particles released into the air. Fans pull any loose fibers and dust through overhead ducts. They are filtered through a large mesh and collected for future use as pellets, biomass, or even compressed wood boards. Hempitecture is experimenting with other types of hemp wool products, like thin underlayment for carpets. This flexible material could be used instead of rubber, wool, foam, or any other synthetic fibers. They have also made an exterior rigid board panel that can be used as continuous exterior insulation. This product is much stiffer, more waterproof, and it's fire rated. In my last video on hemp wool, I tested the fire resistance of the insulation and I was very disappointed with the result. If you've watched the video, you know that the material started smoking and the fire spread very rapidly. Thankfully, Hempitecture has now addressed those concerns. They tested numerous fire resistance sprays and they found one that works perfectly with their material. When exposed to a flame, the surface of the material darkened, but it did not catch on fire. It didn't even smolder. This is a huge accomplishment from previous iterations of the product. I was also impressed with its water resistance. Water puddled on the surface for a while before slowly sinking into the top layer of the fibers. As you can see, the water did not seep through the entire insulation bat. It was only absorbed by the top layer, so the bat maintained its shape and structure. I am very impressed with how far Hempitecture has come in the last few years. I truly admire their hard work and entrepreneurial spirit. They are up against so many variables that are out of their control, but they keep persevering. Deshaun explained this quite succinctly. The whole production line um, is 
made for for non-woven textile industry um, as a whole, but they work best with synthetic and um, cotton and other fibers. So we're actually the first company in the to US use to use these machines with hemp fiber, which makes it very unique and um, a lot more struggles than other You're companies. You're pushing it to its limit because hemp fiber is a lot tougher. It's a lot more uh, <laughs> tougher and stiff and, and every, every bill you get is always different. Yeah. They are dealing with different plant species, different moisture contents, different densities and more. Even the cooking times differ depending on the species they receive. They cannot come up with a set formula for their product because of all these variables. So every day presents a new challenge. But they are learning from their mistakes and experiments and they just keep going. I was very inspired by their resilience. Let me know what you think about Hempwell in the comments and if you think it can revolutionize the home construction industry. If you'd like to check out my podcast with Maddie, the co-founder of Hempitecture, I'll link it up here. Also check out my last video on Hempool if you haven't watched it yet. I'll link my Patreon page in the description. I'm now offering early access to ad-free videos on Patreon as a thank you to everyone supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.